it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe if you're also back welcome back thank you so much for joining me again I'm happy to see your face but if you're new and maybe you like what you see please consider subscribing we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty and today we have another get ready with me where I'm trying out new products oh my god oh my god oh my god all right so I did go ahead and grab the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Defining Neutrals Palette. All right, yeah, yeah. I said I wasn't going to pick this up, but so many of you wanted to hear my feedback, so I went ahead and grabbed it because I did grab the Major Dimension 3 from Patrick Ta, which is kind of similar, they're neutral palettes. They released at the same time, they have very similar color stories, but they're very different in their presentation, like the formulations. Danessa Myricks has pomades as well as powder shades in her palette and Patrick Ta has powders and two creams so very similar we'll talk about it at the end of the video once we you know go through the look so we're going to use this palette all over the face and you'll see mine fell apart already yep 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 good time so we're gonna use this palette I also have the new house labs concealer oh my god so this is the tri clone skin tech concealer i love complexion products if there's a concealer on the market i am willing to try it out not all of them though because some of them are glowy serum Ugh, no but this one i was excited about because i wanted to see what house labs would do with a concealer so we're gonna test this out in this video we also have the new pore eclipse powder from milk makeup i love a mattifying powder i do like a loose powder i always use a powder in any of my makeup looks because i have oily skin so of course i wanted to try this out and i don't think we tried any other new product in the video so we're just gonna balance out the rest of the face with products that i've already tried and tested but the Danessa Myricks palette is like a full face kind of product. So we're gonna do brows, eyes, contour, bronzer, and lips with the Danessa Myricks palette. So everything else is just fluff and fill in. So if you wanna see how I created this look and also hear my thoughts about these new products, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right guys, so as usual, what are we doing? We're starting off with a clean, freshly washed face. And I think today my moisturizer is going to be my Lancome Hydrazen. I really like this moisturizer. It's very lightweight, it's airy, it smells good, it feels good. It's just, it's a good time. And I want a lightweight moisturizer today. So it's just a, hmm, it's like a fluffy cream. And it has that signature Lancome like old school scent I love that scent because it reminds me of my childhood and my aunt's home she was the only one that was really into like skincare and beauty I spent a lot of time with that aunt and then the rest of my aunts were very like low-key you know this was the fashionable aunt with the nails and all the things because she was a hairdresser right and my mom wore some makeup but it was like lipstick and i remember stealing that red lipstick and applying it all over my face like a clown anyway i love that moisturizer and it leaves this like almost like powdery feel behind even though your skin feels hydrated and comfortable all right so i didn't fill in my brows this time because we have as i mentioned in the intro the new Danessa Myricks Groundwork Defining Neutrals Palette for Eyes, Brows, Face, and Lips. It's a whole to-do child. I'm applying some primer, so I'm using my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. I wish they would go back to this squeeze tube packaging. I don't like the doe foot one at all. Now, I have oily skin, so I have to apply a primer regardless. And I apply my primer on my eyelids as well as in my brows someone had asked me how to prevent like creasing in smile lines and like on your nose let me tell you how you apply an eyeshadow primer I know there are face primers that will help to blur the pores and fill in this and fill in that and help with oil control but if you really want your foundation to stay in place and stick 
use an eyeshadow primer. I know it's like a little bit of a trick because an eyeshadow primer is going to hold on to makeup a lot better than a face primer will. A face primer will help depending on the type. It can definitely help your foundation and your face makeup last a little bit longer. But if you want it to stick and hold on for dear life, an eyeshadow primer. All right. Let's talk about this palette because I wasn't going to pick it up initially. I'm going to show you what it looks like up close and personal while I read the information on the website. So this retails for $65, which I was a little surprised by because Vanessa Myricks, her um, light work palettes are like a hundred and something dollars. The last palette I got with the multi-chromes was $125 or something close to that. So I was expecting this to be like $120. Lo and behold, it's $65, like half of what I expected it to be, especially, especially with inflation prices. So this contains 10 different shades of velvet pomade and shape and fix powder. So there's 10 pomades and 10 powders. Let's read what it says directly from the Danessa Myricks website. It says it is a multi-use talc free palette with velvety pomades and coordinating oil absorbing shape and powders that easily define eyes, brows, cheeks, and lips. It's an everyday all over the face essentials palette with curated neutral shades for all skin tones, buildable colors for eyes and face to create soft to bold results with a velvet satin finish. One palette, two unique textures for each of the 10 shades. Velvet Pomade is a high performance, lightweight pomade that applies with ease. Shape and fix powders in color coordinating tones infused with Upsolite to control oil and smooth texture while locking in shape and definition. Your go-to palette that makes it easy to do makeup like a pro. Okay, now let's talk about how to use because that's what I am interested in because I am confusion, okay? I don't know what to do with these, all right? So eyes, brows, face, lips, the whole works. I need to know how you recommend using this. So it says, lift, fill, line, shape, sculpt, and set your eyes, brows, face, and lips with a brush or finger application. First, use the velvet pomades to shape and define, then use the shape and fix powders to set. Um. All right, so pretty much what you're saying is that I need to use the pomades as like a cream eyeshadow or a cream face product and then set everything down with the powders. All right, you saw the swatches of these shades. I do not like it, initial impression. The larger pans are the pomades, the thin little pans are the powders. When I swatched these, I was like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It doesn't pick up. It doesn't pick up with a finger very well. And I was just like, I don't, I want no parts. I don't want to use this. This feels stupid already. <laughs> the pomades are like a velvet cream to powder. It's not even really a cream. It's like a putty, you know? So it feels dry, but squishy at the same time. It's weird. It's a weird texture, but it's what I expected, right? Because they said pomade. I was like, all right, it's going to be one of those little putty things. I think you're too close to me. You're too close. You're too in my face. So I was like, all right, let's see what this is about. So we're going to go ahead and apply this to the brows and see what, you know, what takes place. So let me just, whoo, I'm nervous, y'all. I am nervous because I think this is going to be a disaster. I'm going to hate it. So let's go into... Hmm, I'm gonna use Bark, which is the dark brown, because my brows are dark. All right, oh Lord Jesus, so I'm picking it up with my brow brush, and it kind of sinks right in, like a full-on cream. That day, okay, let come back in, come back in, so you can like be up in my Kool-Aid. All right, I'm going to use this brush to define my brows, kind of like any cream brow product just like dip brow from Anastasia Beverly Hills is kind of a similar concept okay all right this is applying a lot nicer than I had expected all right all right you're faring a lot better in the brows let's see how this goes so you're definitely going to need like a fine brush to do this that's actually not too bad at all. Hmm. 
This color is a little bit too red though. It's given a little bit too warm for my brows, right? Is it just a little, like a touch too warm? All right, let's try out instead the Sculpted Duo, which is still a dark brown, but it looks more cool tone. Same brush and we'll just flick it through the brows again. And you see it picks up on the brush pretty well. You do kind of have to stab the pen, but it, it picks up on the brush. And this is fine how it's applying. I personally prefer to use a pencil for my brows, but I don't mind this so much. It's not too pigmented where it's getting out of control. So it's given me enough control to kind of brush it through the brows without it smearing everywhere. Um, yeah, that color is better than this one. This one's just a little bit more on the red side. This one's a little bit better for my brow color. And all of this is gonna depend on your brush, like how the brush applies it. If you have a really thin angled brush, then you know, you can create fine strokes. I don't do that. I kind of just shade my brows in because I have full brows. I just shade it in and then define it. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, okay. I'm going to actually use my brow pencil though because I don't feel like a pomade will ever get the definition that I really want, like the sharp line to outline my brows. And I'm not using it to fill it in. I'm just sharpening up the arch and then the tail, because I really like a crisp line. But that's my preference. You may prefer a softer line. I like definition, child. But if you just want something quick and sculpted, I think, okay, that works so far. I just need something crisp, okay? Something sharp, okay. So I think the brows, yeah, they're good, they're good. My next step would be, well, should we use the powder? I, I feel like I don't want to use the powder because it's going to get darker. But all right, let's 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 use a little bit of the powders. So let's use the sculpted powder. Same brush. I'm just cleaning it off in my washcloth. And I'll just apply it over some parts of the brow. Um, It's not really doing anything. <laughs> It's really not. I think the powders are very thin and it makes sense because if you use them on the face, you kind of want powders to be thinner. My brows look intense, but that's cool because I do like a good, you know, solid brow. All right, now I need to clean up under my brows. I usually use my concealer, but since I have the pomades, I kind of want to see how they work. Come back in. I keep like pushing you away, but you really should be in. All right, what shade should we, let's use this one. So that one is Mirage, all right? So I'm gonna use my Makeup Shacks T72 brush. Let's see how it picks up. It does kind of pick up like a concealer, right? Let's see if it works like a concealer. So what I do is I go under my brow to shape and define. Okay, it's not as pigmented, but it definitely is still giving me a little bit of color to sharpen up the, ooh, I don't like that. It's enough, but it's not enough for me. It would be enough if you were going for a soft look. I'm not a soft look kind of person, so that's not enough for me. Yeah, I am itching to use my own concealer. But I mean, it does something. I think if you were going for like a bridal look, a soft look, this might work really well to clean up and sharpen up and define the brow. Do you see? It looks pretty. It does, but it's very subtle, right? And that's that may be what you're into. And I'm gonna let you have that. For me, I'm gonna go in with my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer just because I need a little extra, okay? I am extra, so I'm gonna sharpen my brows the way I like, all right? And I'm not gonna pull it too far down because I still wanna use the, the palette, you know, to see what it does. So let's go on with you guys. I appreciate your comments from my last video. 
my get ready with me. I won't get into it. I just want to let you know that I appreciate it because I didn't want the comments to get over flooded with that one sentiment and I appreciate that you guys did not flood my comments with that. So thank you and then for those of you who did, you know, extend your kind words, thank you so much and a lot of you did relate as well. So thank you. All right, let's just blend that out. This is my Sephora 71 concealer brush. I'm going to actually use this for the pomades to apply them. So let's go back in with the same one and kind of, ooh, kind of try to pick it up. Let me show you. You see how it just, it moves around? It's a different texture for sure, but what works a little bit better is to kind of like stab at it and then it picks up the product a little bit better. It's almost like stabbing work, so. Let's apply that on the lids. Okay. Um. <laughs> it not really working, it not really pick up Olipa product. Is not a lot of things picking up at all on the brush. But we're going to proceed. So we stab it, and then that happened. Maybe I need another brush. Let's try a different shade. Let's try the sandstone shade, which is the light ivory. And I'm going to use this F07 brush from Chikahoto. When you try to pick it up, it's like it just moves a little putty thing around. It picks up some. Like it definitely picked up. I don't have high hopes. Let's apply that to the tear duct. Okay, it's kind of gathering a bit. So it's not, ooh, yeah. It's kind of, you see how, probably can't see because I can't tell in the viewfinder, but it's not smooth. It's kind of like clumpy in some, like it's gathered, like, you see? It's like a little clump there. So, I'm gonna know, I'm gonna try to blend it out. Let me use my finger, Lord God. No, Jaja. <laughs> what is that? I don't like it, Danessa. I don't like your things. <laughs> I'm like trying every brush that I can find. All right, let's use E54 from Sigma. Same product. Picked it up. <sighs> let's apply it further on the lid. All right, on the lid, it's smoothing out a little bit better. It's like the inner, t <laughs> no. the inner tear duct is grabbing on for dear life and not letting that little cluster go, that little clump. It's like, you're staying with me, ma'am. No, oh, I'm gonna get it out now. Oh, me's going to get it out. Lot of mercy. Child, <laughs> let me get a Q-tip. Oh my God. Do you love how we call all cotton swabs Q-tips? Brand recognition, or maybe that's a Jamaican thing. Jamaicans will hold on to a brand name and call every other product under the same genre by that product name. Like nail polish, we call nail polish Q-tex. Y'all know Q-tex, right? <laughs> we call every single nail polish Q-tex. So if, if my aunt calls me, which she does, she's like, Tina, you have any Q-Tex over there? I don't have any Q-Tex, but I have nail polish. She's like, yes, I'm looking for some Q-Tex. <laughs> I'm like, all right, me bring you some Q-Tex. So it's like, you almost have to fight with the product a bit to apply it, and I don't appreciate that. Let's go in with the powder and see what that does. So the powder picks up. And we'll apply it over the putty thing. Um, very thin powders, no pigmentation. Not what you would expect from a typical eyeshadow. All right, that's fine, that's fine. Let's carry on. Um, let's use core right here. What the, Bombaras, look here. Look at you. Danessa things drop off. Oh, no, I want to play it too much. The palette is beautiful. Like, this is like a faux leather 
you know, with a little crinkle to it. It's a deep bronze. It's sexy. Like, when I saw the palette, I was like, that is sexy. And then it has a little name plate that's metal. But it just drop off at the front. You said, look at glue and then put the things drop off. Mom, it drop off a lot of mur <laughs> murder police. So I forgot, I forgot glue it on back. Danessa, Danessa, come here. <laughs> come to the front of the class. What is happening? Like, I've used this once so far. Like, are you crazy? All right, core is what we're going into, which is the RNG thing. And we're using another brush. This one is the FO10 again from Chico Hodo. It's the fox hair brush because I'm trying to like figure out what brushes work. So let me just apply that. I'm picking it cut like it picks up on the like I see it on the brush. So it picks up a little bit. I mean, it's applying sufficiently like it's it's very light. It's, I mean, that's not a, is it a problem? It may be a problem. <laughs> no, like I've seen other people use it and I've seen the Nessa like use it and I'm like, but it don't even look good. And like what they emphasize is like a cut crease. They do like defined looks where they use the creams to create like lines and then I don't, I don't like it at all. Lord of mercy. Let me go into the powder part and just see if it. No. May I tell you right now, right now, honestly, truly, this is going back. Nothing about this palette is giving me easy to use and effortless or beautiful. Like that orange is okay. But that just took too much effort to do. All right, let's go into Harvest, which is the more orangey tone, warm brown. And I'm going to now use a Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. So this is a synthetic. So I'm trying to use natural hair bristles, synthetic bristles to see. And like... It seems to pick up. You see it, right? Because this brush was completely clean. So it seems to pick up. And then, I mean, that's that's not awful. I guess that's not awful. But, like, why would I choose this over my Patrick Ta palette that I just picked up as well? Why would I choose this over my paint pots, my about face paints, or my Juvia's Place palette, coffee palette. You know, like, why would I choose this? Because it's not looking any pretty. I mean, is it prettier? It's a softer look for sure. So maybe if you were doing like bridal things or you wanted a very, very soft look, it would kind of make sense. But for my purposes, I don't know that it does. Like, why would I go through all this effort when I can grab just a regular powder palette with the pigmentation that I want? And not have to deal with this. I mean, it applied okay. Like, so far, it's okay. It's okay. All right, let's try out. So, we've tried out most of the shades so far. Let's try the dark brown again, which is sculpted on the outer V. Now, I'm using a Sonia Kashuk blending brush. Synthetic again. Okay, that applied fine. That's applying fine. Like, they blend fine. It's not about them blending because on the back it says, buildable, blendable, velvety, rich color. Rich color, where? Where is the rich color? Well, I guess the brown is kind of rich. Um, <laughs> like, I'm trying to find the words because I am positive with enough work, I'm going to get a pretty enough look. You know, and they are blendable. 
because they're blending really well. You see how the blend is happening? So, yes, blendable, indeed. And I think they're merging together beautifully. Would I use this as a base palette for the rest of my eyeshadows? I could, you know, I could. Let me pick up that sculpted shade and just apply it. She said to apply it over the the cream to to set it. And it's it's setting indeed, but it's darkening up a little bit. And so it's removing some of the blend. Do I need to set it though? Cause is it going to crease? Is that what you're trying to imply that it's going to crease? Cause that makes me nervous. Let me grab the Mirage powder, which is, oh, okay. The powder over the cream don't look nice. Girl, girl, <laughs> no, Danessa. Danessa, may I forget our word? Let's have a word because like I'm accomplishing something, right? I've accomplished something. I think this looks fine. It looks fine. Let me try to that doesn't look fine. Let me blend it out. And do the cream set down like the pomade set down so I can't blend after? I mean, it's more. It, this side looks a lot more blended and pretty. Like it looks really airbrushed, right? Father be a servant. Let me grab the sandstone, the cream shade that we used on the tear duct under the brow. That's pretty. As a brow shade, it's pretty because it's subtle. It's not giving too much, which is what I like from a brow shade. <laughs> I don't know. I do not know currently how I feel. I don't know. All right, let's do foundation. Since we're using the Danessa Myricks palette, let's use the Danessa Myricks skin tint. So this is the Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint. The shade I have is 11, which is actually a pretty good shade match. I do like this shade for me. And should we do primer? We should do a little bit of primer. Let's use my usual which is the L'Oreal Primer, the infallible on my T-zone because this, this is a glowy product. There's no question of whether or not it's glowy. So the eyeshadow, it doesn't feel heavy. I mean, does eyeshadow ever feel heavy though? Doesn't feel heavy, but I'm gonna see if it creases. That's my concern. I did set it with powder. I did use my eyeshadow primer, but with creams, you never know. Let's just apply the skin tint really quickly. There's not much to say about this skin tint, but what's going on with you guys? I think I'm gonna do like just a chat video talking about the things that have been carrying on online. Somebody asked me to talk about the Raw Beauty Christie situation. If you don't know, Raw Beauty Christie it was called out by Peter Mon recently. Peter Mann is a drama car car <laughs> car car drama commentary channel. He's been around for a while now. I like Peter. I follow Peter. Um, I mainly follow his vlogs though, cause I like to to hear him talk about his day and like catch up. I I like things like that just to keep me company. I don't have to listen too keenly, and it's just like noise in the background. I like. I like hearing him talk about like his recovery and his life stories and stuff like that, fine. But he does commentary about, you know, influencers in the beauty space. He got messages about Raw Beauty Christy following James Charles because he was calling out Manny MUA and Laura Lee and whoever else that is supporting Colleen Ballinger which is Miss Ukulele. 
she's the one oh god there's too much there's too much she's the one that's having like inappropriate conversations in group chats with her subscribers her followers her supporters her fans they were underage and she was having like inappropriate sexual conversations but anyhow he spoke about her and then he was calling out people who were still supporting her or whatever right and so in doing so people sent him messages about raw beauty christy supporting james charles because you know james charles kind of it's kind of like a crossover because james charles has also reached out to minors and sent them sexually explicit photos and was like soliciting what's essentially child porn from them you know because he wanted pics too of that sexual nature and james charles actually admitted to this on camera after he was called out right he was called out by tati westbrook initially right and that whole drama getting situation i don't need to rehash it the point is he was dming minors and asking them for porn child porn and also sending them pictures of himself you know sexual pictures nude pictures the whole nine yards this skin tint is nice let me tell you i expected this to be way too glowy way too awful but since i've gotten it it's like won me over and i said that in my initial video where i tried it it isn't too glowy it's a nice simple listen mirror I... every day i fight with this mirror i think it overheats and then it doesn't want to stay on but it looks beautiful on my skin like simple easy perfect skin tone match it doesn't look harsh my skin looks healthy right but not too glowy i appreciate so um yes yeah, so he was calling out all those predators right have a new concealer hold up the house labs concealer already told you that i'm gonna try this out in the intro let me see if i can change this light as well this is the triclone skin tech concealer corrector seven milliliters 0.24 ounces let's read the info on the sephora website so it retails for 32 dollars and is available in 31 shades i picked up two of the shades so this is a lightweight, long-wearing, non-comedogenic concealer that does more than cover. It visibly blurs, deep puffs, brightens, and conceals with medium buildable coverage. Wait, it deep puff? Why it deep puff? Tell me why it deep puff. Okay, so highlighted ingredients. We have niacinamide, which is known to brighten and boost skin's hydration. Fermentin Arnica, which reduces the look of redness and irritation. They have that in their foundation as well, and I think also in their powders. And the hyaluronic acid complex which visibly plumps and hydrates so that's where the plumping comes from all right okay made with high-tech skin loving ingredients and flexible pigments that seamlessly adapt to the skin this proprietary formula blurs fine lines brightens and deep puffs under eyes conceals redness and hyperpigmentation and leaves skin hydrated mica free and non-comedogenic for all skin types all right so they did clinical tests on 15 women ages 18 to 65 over two weeks. 100% said under eye puffiness was reduced. 100% said it feels weightless all day. And then 100% says it delivered all day hydration. And this one was on 39 women ages 25 to 55 in a 12 hour like testing period. So we're saying 100%, girl. Let me find out, 100%, hundreds, not 50, not 98, not 96, hundreds, hundreds percent. So I picked up two shades, like I said. I picked up 34 medium, it says it's for medium skin with yellow or olive undertones. That's me, hello, hi. Actually, originally I picked up 40, which is medium deep golden. The shade name on Sephora is different. So this is 40 medium deep golden on the bottle, but on the website it's 40 medium deep neutral. That's not true because it's described as medium deep with golden undertones. Either way, I chose two shades that were next to each other in the golden undertone range. So this is the level down and this is the step up. So 34 and 40. And I swatched them out and I think they'll work. The original one I picked up was the 40, right? So 40 is gonna be like my skin tone match. Let's zoom in. You see how my skin looks pretty? 
One thing I will note, I love the packaging. I think this is plastic. It, it sounds like it could be glass, but I think it's just hard plastic. But really nice. The applicator is kind of a chubby arrowhead doe foot. It's a thicker, fluffier applicator, and I like that. So I'm going to apply my regular shade around my mouth, or what I think will be my regular shade. It looks like it will be, and blending it out, it did seem to be. Here's what I want to mention that pushing it in is a little questionable, but it clicks closed, which I like. I like a good click. Then I'm going to go in with 34 shades. So pulling it out is a little bit more difficult because it's a thicker applicator. I'm just going to put a bit under my eyes where my dark, my darkness is. I don't, ooh, child, and I'm gonna go back with the 40 and put a little bit out here. Yeah, yeah, I think that will do. I also picked up the concealer brush. I just liked it. It's my style of concealer brush, but it's a little bit, well, no. It's actually almost the exact same shape as the Anissa Beauty brush. <laughs> it actually is. Oh my God, I thought it was different. No, it's not. Sand brush. CM brush. Anyway, I'm gonna try it so it's, so let's blend around the mouth That blended nicely. I don't know what the coverage is yet though. Hold on. I don't know That blended nicely That did blend nicely. Am I might drop in? Let me blend out at the side here So I swatched it in store. So when I blended it out in store, I was like, oh I like this formula because it kind of dries down. Let's do under the eyes now. It kind of dries down, but it doesn't feel dry at the same, ooh. <laughs> no, look there, look at that. It blends out quickly. Did you see how, look, look, let me show you. Look how quickly it blends out, like, I swipe it and it's blended out, but it's given me coverage. Like that under eye is yes. <laughs> like I have to think about this for a minute because I tried two concealers the last time in my get ready with me. I did the Tower 28 and the Makeup by Mario and neither of them did this. That is freaking pretty. Hydrated, blended out, no issue, looks pretty. Y'all, I think the last concealer that did this that made me go wow was the Givenchy one. Oh, slaps are nice. Like, nice, nice. All right, let's go in with some new powder. So this is from Milk Makeup. So these are the Pore Eclipse Matte Translucent Talc-Free Setting Powders from Milk Makeup, $32, four shades available. I picked up medium, translucent medium, and translucent deep because I thought medium was gonna be like it. It's a little bit light, not gonna lie, so I'll use it under my eyes. And then medium deep, so they have a deeper shade. This is medium deep, right? But they have translucent very deep. So they have a richer, deeper shade, which I like to see actually. Now this is a weightless, talc-free, translucent, loose setting powder that controls shine, blurs pores, and sets makeup up to 16 hours for a smooth matte finish. Ingredients, we have lentil extract, which absorbs oil to control shine, pore blowing microspheres, which give a soft focus filtered finish, and bakuchiol and niacinamide, which are skincare ingredients that visibly smooth skin texture and minimize the look of pores and fine lines. Okay, all absorbing formula, control shine for a seamless, non cakey finish that doesn't settle into fine lines. Developed in translucent shades for a wide range of skin tones, so there's no flashback. It's also made with niacinamide and bakuchiol to minimize the look of pores, visibly smooth skin texture, and even tone. Clinical results, you ready? 
So in a consumer perception study, I don't know what that means. It's a perception study of 32 people using the product in a 16 hour period. So this was a short test child. 100% said skin and makeup immediately looked smoother. That's a quick, yeah, quick one too. 100% said it sets makeup for up to 16 hours. So it was like a wear test. Okay, and then 96% said it absorbs excess oil. So not a full 100, 96 is close. So let's go in. Let's see if the concealer is settling in. I mean, it, yeah, it settles into your line. So you're gonna want to set this. It definitely did. So beautiful black sleek packaging. Love the packet. Oh, Jesus Lord. I didn't close the cap. So, ooh, it's kind of messy. And I don't know if anybody has perfected. Well, actually, actually, I take that back. I just got the Uma Beauty powder during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Someone said to try it out. This one, I think, is the best packaging I've seen so far. So what it is, it has a little center, you know, well right here. And the powder is at the side and you twist it. And then the powder gets like, I don't know, it comes out at the bottom. It's cute. It's cute the way it does it. And I think this is the best way to like house your powder without it flying everywhere instead of having it higher up. Them having it deeper down, I feel like it's a better way to dispense the product. But the milk makeup one looked like this. So let's go under the eye with my Real Technique sponge. Ooh, you see how the medium's kind of light, girl? This is the translucent medium. So it's formulated to be translucent. So hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that won't be too light. But I know people like that lighter under eye situation to brighten and lift. So we'll do that first. You definitely see how bright that is, child. Child, that is very bright. But we have the translucent deep, right? So let me just, I mean, it's bright, but it's, it could work. Like I could probably use this all over, especially if I had a darker like tan foundation on. The deep might be a little bit too rich. Let me, let me just try it a little bit here. See if it deepens up too much or if it's fine. Oh, you see, it definitely darkens up. Maybe I do need to, do need to use the medium. Yeah, I'm feeling like the medium is the way to go. I feel like this is too, yeah, it's gonna darken up too much. Okay, that's actually a good sign because if you're darker than me, then go for the dark or the deep, the translucent deep. And then if you're my complexion, let's use the medium. Cause I mean, if you have foundation under it, it's just gonna slightly lighten your foundation, but just slightly. You see, it doesn't really lighten it too much. It doesn't lift it too much. So I'll do that. This brush is from Say. It's such a cute little powder brush cause it, it has the chubby handle. It's like a kabuki, but like a long handle kabuki. I love that. Yeah, medium. Definitely medium. Medium for sure, you see? So you can kind of layer it for a little bit more intensity under the eyes like I did and you'll get the brightening effect. But then you can set all over your face lightly with it for a full, ooh. That's pretty. All of my reactions this entire video has been like, <laughs> no, that nice. That is nice, but my skin doesn't look pretty. I definitely, yeah, it doesn't look pretty. Let me see if you can tell. Let me come in. It's not that it's ugly, okay? But that whole smooth and blurring thing, you see a little bit of texture by my pores. Do you see it right here? Not ideal, not ideal at all, but I have pores, okay? So I don't expect like, everything to smooth over my skin and have it look flawless but i have other setting powders 
that do make my skin look a little bit more flawless than this is doing. But that's fine. That's fine. Um, I like it, but I'm not in love because I feel like my Kosas powder does better. But if it's oil absorbing, maybe it will like settle a little bit. Anyway, let's go back to the Danessa Myricks palette because we can use this for face work as well. So we're gonna try it out. I'm not enthused, not enthused, but let's go in with, shall we? Ooh, what are we gonna use for like a contour? Cause she said we can sculpt. I think maybe desert is gonna be our contour shade. I'm gonna use this Mac 171 brush. Picked it up. Let's see if it will do anything. I see, I see a little something, but not too much. All right, let's try instead Harvest. I feel like Harvest may be a little bit too dark, but we're gonna try it nonetheless. Cause I mean, it's not, it's a little bit richer, but we know these are, okay, there we go. And these aren't like heavy products. See now, I think for the face, I prefer it, which is what I was saying in my shopping block, right? That for the face, I can see this working out because her, her formulas, like the pomade that she has, I feel like it works okay in this situation to use as like a bronzer contour. I'm using the same shade on my hairline. To use in this kind of situation as like a cream bronzer or cream contour, definitely. But on the eyes, I just, I just don't prefer that kind of formula because it's gonna be very light. Yeah, see, on the face I prefer it a lot better. But then to get your bigger brush in is a little, a little less convenient. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all, at all. Let's do a little contour on the nose. I have my little contour three brush from Patrick Ta. Let's try the same shade and we'll do a little bit of shading along the bridge of my nose. Cause you know, the bridge of my nose kind of wide. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it applies. It picked up on the brush and it blends. Like the blendability is definitely there, I think. That's a little bit too intense. Let's just blend that out with our concealer brush a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's acceptable. Ooh, that actually looks nice. The way it just shadows my face a little bit. Maybe this concealer brush is better for doing that. Ooh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's use the cream to do a little highlight. Ooh, <laughs> that looks a little bit too, yeah, let's blend that, cause girl, Okay, okay. I appreciate, I, app I can appreciate it for that. On the eyes, not as much, but on the face, good so far. All right, blush, let's do something easy, simple. Let's use something we haven't used in a while, a Clinique Cheek Pop blush. This is Ginger Pop. Love it. Subtle, subtle color. This is a Sonia G classic base brush. This is a very subtle color. Cause we're going for subtle, right? It's just like a little bit of a, how pretty is that? I love the cheek pops from Clinique. I think they're easy blushes. They're pretty, they're not completely matte. They give a beautiful skin a skin-like finish to the, to the, a skin-like finish to the skin. It's a beautiful, like, finish. 
Yeah, it looks very natural and skin-like. And you can build up the, you know, the pigmentation as needed. I think that's a good color. All right, let me do some mascara. And we'll be back to do a lip. All right, we are back. I finished up the eyes with just mascara and a pair of lashes. I'm still, I'm still trying to navigate my feelings about the palette but you know it is what it is we're still going with the lips now so this is meant to be used on the lips so let's do yeah a little bit of a latte lip so that segues back to raw beauty christy you know what let's use the bark shade this warmer brown as like a lip liner and i'm just using a sydney grace what brush is this who i don't know the number but it's a little fine brush so raw beauty christy like i was saying she like got into a little bit of a situation when peter mon called her out right as he was calling out everybody else so he said it was only right to call out raw beauty christy and the thing about it is raw beauty christy is one of those influencers that most people like She's a little bit more removed from the grandness of influencer culture. And Peter Mon has mentioned her in videos before about liking her and she shouted him out. So it's like they had like a decent little rapport going on, right? So when he called her out, like he mentioned that like he expected better from her, right? Because what she did is she liked the painted launch video on James Charles Instagram page it's a whole thing I went to verify it myself so James Charles like I said has that history of pretty much being a predator he is a groomer he chases after young men and he ooh that's nice not only that he chases after young straight men which is what Tati kind of mentioned in her initial video he's trying to be Jeffree Star and seeking out a bi-curious or a mostly straight heterosexual man and get him on to his side you know what I mean if a man is straight he's not gonna be interested in you but anyhow he tries to bait them however whatever and they're usually under 18 because he likes them young child he likes them young so anyway so she liked the picture for his painted launch because james charles just launched his brand of painted cosmetics and he made a little you know a little launch video and Robert beauty christy christie follows him on instagram so she's still well she unfollowed him now but she followed him on instagram and she liked the photo right so you know how it shows up in your feed if if you follow that person or if it's recommended it will show you who you follow that liked the photo and raw beauty christy is highlighted as like in the photo this color is beautiful as like an outline girl girl auntie Donessa should we do no let's not do that let's use the mirage shade which one is mirage this one let's use that so she liked the photo it shows up people saw it and people are like wait a minute what's going on why is raw beauty christy liking this picture why is she following him like he's a predator like what's going on since she spoke up about Colleen Ballinger in one of her recent videos right like she was not loving the whole situation with Colleen but yet she's supporting James Charles so it, it's kind of hypocritical it doesn't it doesn't match up like you can't like one and not like the other you can't speak about one negatively and then support the other it doesn't it doesn't compute like it doesn't follow because they pretty much were doing similar things with their fans right that color a little bit light but we're gonna yeah we're gonna keep going let's use the core shade which is the warmer one and these are all creams so Peter Mon did the video, Raw Beauty Christie saw the video, she reached out to him and they had a conversation 
on the phone, right? And she asked him for advice as to what to do to like handle the situation because people were calling her out. And he suggested that she make a video and address it and just talk about what she said to him, which is she didn't know what was going on, which was like, okay, sure, you didn't know. But yeah, that's what happened. And he's been doing like a couple of videos since then. Other drama videos have done videos since then. And Christie's response has been to block people unfollow James as a performative action and then just continue on with her life on you know life with Chris is it Chris I'm not Christian name when name Zach Zach and Christy you know the little homestead life that they're doing out there in the country so she's just proceeding business as usual and then her last video that she posted which everybody expected it to be like an explanation video like a get ready with me which she does a lot of just like i do oh i messed it up a get ready with me video just talking about the situation and explaining herself but instead she did a latte makeup video it was a very short video kind of a tutorial and she mentioned nothing nothing about the situation and instead has been blocking people who ask her questions and deleting comments so girl <laughs> that's the situation but i think i'm gonna do like a round of video i'll talk about it more but that's what happened and like it's a whole to do Peter was getting like bombarded with nasty comments and they brought up his accident. I'm just gonna try to clean that up. Brought up his accident and all this stuff. And he was even feeling like quitting his channel. So that's, that's what's going on there. But that's it, child. Here's the look. Um, if I do another video, I'm gonna add a gloss over this, but we're gonna leave it as is, all matte. And now we can tell you what I think about the products that we just used. All right, so, so let's talk about the palette itself. I am kind of on the fence. I don't know how to feel about it completely. Like, I don't know. So it's meant for brows, face, eyes, and lips. On the brows, I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. I think it did a great job filling in my brows, right? It's not too creamy, too emollient. It glided through the brows, gave me just the amount of pigmentation I needed without being too much. And I think, you know, it's beautiful. Love it for the brows, I will say. For the face, also doing a little contour situation, especially around my nose. I thought that was great. Like my nose looks snatched without looking too crazy, right? Like contouring my nose, easy peasy. Like you can't even tell. It blended so well. And I will give it that for the blendability. Really blendable. It's messy, so I'm cleaning it up while I talk. So for sculpting the face, yes. However, for sculpting the face, I don't like the size of the pans because they are smaller and for the face you use bigger brushes so it's harder to get into the pans so you'll just have to navigate that and probably clean up your palette if you're like me and so far it's cleaning up easily and then the little putties get really messy looking this is the palette after my one use so this is where i dug in for the brows and then like i was smudging all over for the rest of the face and so it gets messy i don't like that at all and then you have the powders next to the creams they're gonna get messy all around but the powders are not powdery like they don't dust up so you're probably not gonna get that much product into the creams and the creams aren't really creams they're more like putties so maybe that won't be too much of an issue but it's definitely gonna get messy and you're gonna probably get residue from like dust and stuff into this palette so i don't love that aspect of it on the lips it applied really well i like it on the lips it's gonna give you a very matte look but it feels thin lightweight not dry at all so the formula works for the face and the lips and the brows the eyes is where i have the issue which is what you're gonna run into with a multi-use product right 
you're probably not gonna like it for one of those places. And the eyes, I am on the fence. It's not awful. Like, I created a decent look. I, it's okay. If I didn't have primer down, it would be creasing because right now, it's trying to crease on this side, which is where I get the most creasing because of the hooded nature of this eye versus this one. And you can see it's kind of trying to create a little bit of a line, but it's not creasing completely. So I would say definitely prime your eyes, but it's not like an ultra creamy formula. So I don't expect it to just crease automatically, especially if you set it down with powder. But I just found it a little bit less impactful than I would like for an eyeshadow, right? Which again, I expected, but if you're going for a very subtle look, which this is a subtle, beautiful latte makeup look, it really is given latte makeup. This is like the ultimate latte makeup. Everything's matte, everything's like a brown. It, it's pretty, it's pretty, but I didn't like the effort that I had to put into it. And I think the shade that really pissed me off was that cream shade. It just was clumping up in certain areas. It still doesn't look great. But I feel like if I went over it with another eyeshadow palette, like a matte eyeshadow palette, I would have a much better time. So if I use these as cream eyeshadow bases and then go over it, I think I might enjoy it a lot more. But for the face and the lips, it's definitely like, it's a better situation. Now, I got asked the question, would I recommend this palette from Patrick Ta, the Major Dimension 3, or now the Groundwork palette from Danessa Myricks? Here they are up close. Very similar shades. We have the black, we have the black. We have the dark browns, different undertones. Yes, yes, yes. Ice cream so good. We have the warmer tones. We have, you see, like, it's almost identical, the shades, except that Patrick Ta has a white, um, Danessa only has this creamy yellow. Patrick Ta also has like a creamy beige and a creamy yellow. So I think versatility wise, Patrick Ta has more options for like lighter shades. And the medium shades is where Danessa has more options. But I feel like Patrick Ta has all those medium shades. Like this is, this is really 10 shades and the Patrick Ta is also 10 shades, right? With two creams. So we have the diversity of shades. We have a good mix from Patrick Ta. And I feel like the Patrick Ta formula works so well. Even though their powders, they're not too powdery, they're not too loose. They still give a beautiful finish to the eyes. So I'm on the fence. I am still on the fence. I feel like I prefer the Patrick Ta just because I prefer powder eyeshadows. I love this formulation. I love the selection of shades. I love the range of light, medium, and dark shades, plus the two creams that you can use as bases. I love this palette a lot. I love how it applied. I love how it blended. Everything was seamless. The look that I created was amazing. But I feel like with this palette, I wouldn't be able to create the same looks as the Patrick Ta palette. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm tripping, but the intensity won't be there. So if you like punch and pigment from your eyeshadows, no. But if you like more subtle, very natural looks, then Danessa Myricks may be right up your alley. But I feel like the Patrick Ta one, you can also get subtle looks from depending on the shades you use, right? The Danessa Myricks, I feel, was a little bit trickier to work with, formula-wise. So between the creams and the powders, it was just a little trickier to work with. But at the same time, the shades kind of blend nice. So you just have to do a little bit more to pick it up on the brush, apply it and build and blend and all that stuff. But they blend. So you see where I'm like tethering on the line? Like, do I like it? Do I not like it? Because I don't know how I feel. And then to add insult to injury, the fucking little nameplate fell off the front. So now I gotta glue it back on. But um, I don't know. Like I prefer for myself, personally, the Patrick Ta palette. Hands down, don't, don't, no question. All right, don't ask me nothing. Hands down, prefer it. Will pull it out more than I would pull out the Danessa Myricks one. But I'm almost feeling like I really like the Nessa, ooh, the lighting, hold on. And you can even see the contour a little bit more now. You see how 
The nose contour is where it's selling me. For real though, like it was so easy to apply and it blended so nicely. So it's almost like I wish you would have these little pomades as individual duos because I would for sure buy one just to contour my nose. But do I need it for that? Like, am I gonna pull it out just for that? Am I gonna fill my brows in with it? I probably will get use out of it for the brows. I would use it again for the brows. So that's where I'm at. For the lips, I would use it again for the lips too. So, I don't know. I don't, like, this is, this one I'm puzzled by. This one I can't say definite yes, definite no. Patrick Ta is more expensive. It's $70. The Nessa Myricks is $65. It's still 10 shades. The Nessa Myricks, you're going to have those cream shades to do, like, multifunctional things all over the face with. I feel like the Patrick Ta, you can still do multifunctional. I'm just like... I don't know. I do not know. I love the packaging of both. I really love the packaging of the Dennis and Myricks until it fell apart on me. So here we are. All right. I don't know. I legit don't know. For the concealers, because this is the other new thing we tried. I love this. I love the concealer so much. I really like the formula. I love how it blends. I love how it sets down. It creases a little bit under the eyes as all concealers do. I don't know one concealer that I've tried that doesn't crease under the eyes. That creaseless situation doesn't apply, all right? It's gonna settle into your fine lines if you have fine lines. So just set it down, set it down with the powder. Why are you tripping? I love this concealer formula though. It gives the right coverage. It's not feeling heavy. It blended out so, you saw the blend. Don't play with me, you saw that blend. I didn't even have to fake it. <laughs> As some people do, some people do, I'm telling you. I don't fake it with you guys, you're gonna see what I see because it's our money, it, things are expensive, we're trying to get the best bang for a buck, that's what I'm here for. It blended out so well. And even in my smile lines, like it's not even settling. I love this, I love the look, I love it. I love it, okay? I really do like it a lot. And the two shades I picked up are perfect because one can brighten. Like, it's not too loud. It's just, I really love the concealer. I can't even, I, good job, House Labs. Really love the concealer. I tried two that were really bad. So to have this one come and kind of redeem the concealer situation for me, absolutely love. All right, the powder, which was the last thing we tried, right? Everything else I've used before, the Yummy Skin, Skin Tint, I really love. I've, I've said that before. I really love it. I expected not to because it's supposed to be glowy, but beautiful, beautiful, the powders. The Deep Shade, not for me. If you're my complexion, go for the Medium. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. It's mattified my skin so far. It's kept the oils at bay, but it's not the prettiest powder. I would use it under the eyes again. I think it's set under the eyes really well. And even all over the face, but I feel like my T-zone area needs a little bit more smooth and a little bit more help. But most products don't look good there. So do I want to blame this product or do I want to blame my skin? I'm going to try it out some more, but so far I like it. I don't love it. I don't love it, but I really like it. And if it holds up, Oil-wise, I'm gonna enjoy it more. And I'll leave a comment down below and let you know because I'm gonna wear it like for a few more hours. So I'll let you know how that oil control situation goes, especially with the Yummy Skin um, Foundation. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we are at. Foundation, love. Concealer, love. Groundwork, I don't know how I feel. And then the powder, I need to test it out some more. Don't love it, but I like it. So there you go. That's it. That's it. Hopefully this video was helpful. I love trying out new products with you guys. I told you that before and I'll tell you again. I love testing out new products, which is why I keep buying them because I really don't need any more makeup. So I do this for you guys because you guys want to know what I think and how I feel. So there you have it. I probably didn't help you much with the, um, the palette situation. But I feel like I still prefer the Patrick Ta one because I feel like it's just better. It's more bang for your buck. You're getting more shades, more light shades. Because I feel like...
The lighter shades is where the Danessa Myricks one falls short because I feel like you needed a couple more lighter shades because people like inner tear duct highlights. They like a lighter shade on their lids, on the bridge of their nose for so the highlight. Like, where are the highlight shades? So I feel like Danessa falls short there and then the formula isn't like the easiest to work with. You have to kind of get used to it and figure out what brushes to use, you know? So there's a learning curve with the Danessa, but the Patrick Ta is kind of straightforward, so... That's all I got. I got nothing more. I can't... <laughs> like, I really... I'm here. Like, I don't know, okay? I think I'm gonna keep the Danessa Myricks one because I like it for the brows and the, the sculpting of the nose. And I'll probably still use it for, like, the eyes for, like, cream bases. So I think that's where we're at. So if that tells you anything, I'm not returning it, you know, and I, I'll return something quick if I hate it. So that gives you an idea, but I prefer the Patrick Toss. So there you have it. I will go ahead and leave a full list of the products mentioned and used down below in the description box, along with links on where you can pick them up. If there is an asterisk next to any of those links, that indicates that it is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. It's a great way to show your support for the channel because it gives me a kickback and I can put it right back into the content. So I really, really, truly appreciate you guys using my links. A lot of you have been using my links and you mention it and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. And I also have super thanks and channel memberships. Those kind of act like a tip jar. So if you wanted to contribute to the channel, that's also a great way to do it. And I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.